Hello everyone, this is Tim with Online Big Blue bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. Well, it happened, and we all kind of knew it was going to happen. Shermer got fired. And you know what? I am not going to sit here and revel in the fact that a man lost his job. Yes, did I feel like he should have lost his job? Sure. But you know what? He still has a man. He still has a family. Um, I don't feel too terrible left, uh, too terrible for him, considering he had two years left on his contract, but uh, which he's getting paid for. But let's not revel in the fact that he's gone. Let's just be happy that he's gone. Here's the big question now. Dave Gettleman and the coaching carousel. You know, it's it's a lot of people are worried that we're keeping Gettleman. Well, I can tell you right now, just from the news reports and seeing things online, Gettleman is not going to have the keys to the castle to pick the head coach. This looks like it's going to be a multitude of persons making this decision. Ownership, both looks like both owners are going to be involved. You know, of course, Gellman will have a say in this, but it's not going to be his call, which is great because, you know, he <laughs> he hung his hat on Shermer. Now, Shermer, we have to think about this, is really crazy. I mean, Shermer got two coaching gigs. Let's remember, he was in St. Louis first. He was 1-15 and 7-9 and as Spagnola's offensive coordinator, and he got the Cleveland job. You know, he was a mess in Cleveland, fired after two years. Same coaching record now as the Giants. He kicks around a little bit. He, he has one really good season as an offensive coordinator over in Minnesota again. He lands a giant gig. Again, to me, he was a retread coach. Uh, and, you know, and not that there's anything wrong with that, because sometimes you fail the first time that you coach. You look at Bill Belichick. But also sometimes you fail multiple times. Look at North Turner. So well, the question is, who will be the Giants' new head coach? And honestly, I don't know right now. There's so many names being thrown about. There's so many requests for interviews going on right now. I mean, from anywhere from the dude from BC to all the way down to, you know, people hoping for a return of Bill Belichick. You know, one name that does scare me is Josh McDaniel. I mean, I, I think he's Shermer 2.0 which I would like to stay away from. I think he is a good offensive coordinator with a Belichick team. He went and had his shot over at Denver, hung his hat on Tebow, failed miserably. And you turn around, you can't sit there and go, okay, well, you know what? It's time to bring him, let him have his shot again. Maybe it is time to let him have a shot again. Maybe he's learned. Maybe he Belichicked it. Maybe he learned how to be a coach the second time around. I don't know. What I do know is that this process to hire a head coach is probably going to be long and arduous. Why? Ownership, management need to get this right. You failed with McAdoo. Technically, you failed when Spagnola became the interim coach. Because you know, let's think about this for a second. A lot of interim coaches turn around, turned it around and stayed on as the head coach. Belichick didn't make that. I'm Belichick. I mean, Shermer didn't. Uh, again, I can't even talk today. Spagnola did not make that adjustment. So you know what? That was another. To me, it wasn't a bad hire. You know, it it was a hire of need because he was on the coaching staff. And then we turn around and pick Shermer. So we've had three coaching changes in the last four years. So you know what? You got to get this right. I, I see the names like Mike McCarthy. Mike McCarthy, I don't think he's going to come here because I think he's going to want more control over the personnel decisions, which I do not think is a bad thing because I do think a coach should have the ability to pick some of his players. Um, you know, one thing that does bug me is Shermer is now getting all this credit for selecting Daniel Jones, and it, it came out in the media a couple times now that that's a, that's a crock of shit, that yes, he was on board with Jones, but Gettleman made the pick. So you know what? It's almost like certain people want to take away some of the good things. Gettleman has done some bad things, but he almost wants you to take away some of the good things that Gettleman has done for the organization. And honestly, Daniel Jones was one of them. I I wanted Daniel Jones over Dwayne Haskins. You can go back to any of my podcasts. I thought Dwayne Haskins was going to be more of a a project quarterback, and I thought Daniel Jones was going to be more of a pro, the most pro-ready quarterback in the draft. That's my that him and Drew Locke. But that's neither here nor there. Can we speculate? on who the names are going to be. No, we don't need to speculate because we see in the press all day long. Can we speculate who's going to make it into the second round of interviews? No, honestly, because the playoffs are here. And there may be a coach on a playoff team 
that will not interview until after the playoffs are over. Uh, you know, because, I mean, that's just the way it is. Um, I see that Ron Rivera just signed, you know, with Washington. Uh, I think that's int- I think that's a great signing for Washington since they fired Bruce Allen. I think, it's, I think he's going to have more control of the team uh, because without a GM in place, him coming in will give him more control of the organization. But for our – will I speculate right now who the coaching hire will be? No. Because there are too many variables. There are too many wild cards. Do I see Belichick coming home? Now, just we all have to remember a couple times. We have to got to remember this, guys. Sometimes the second coming of a coach is not their best work. I mean, look at Joe Gibbs. <laughs> Joe Gibbs had, you know, 80s and 90s, Redskins, you know, God. Once you know goes off to run the home, goes off to have the Home Depot racing team, you know with Tony Stewart, God, in that sport comes back to Washington, nah, not too good. <laughs> so, not that I think that Belichick would fail, I I just don't know if Belichick is ready for this type of commitment and this type of team, because it's while we have some interesting young talent, I don't see us having. Uh, I don't see it as quality talent yet. Can it grow into quality talent? Sure. But, you know, the interesting thing I think Belichick would be, he would definitely have a quarterback in place. He would have a running back in place. And he would probably bring in some guys on offensive line that would ship up, shape up the guys that we have. Or we would switch to more of the Josh McDaniel system and the line blocking that they use in New England. So, But speculating right now on who the coach is going to be, you know, is, is, is utter nonsense. So we're not going to get involved in it. We're going to tell you who we don't want. Like I said, we don't want Josh McDaniels. I think that's 2.0. I don't want an uh, Shermer 2.0. I don't want another assistant. I would like someone that has head coaching experience. Um, I would like someone if they did not have NFL head coaching experience that they had coaching experience in the NFL and maybe went to college and you know, everyone's like, oh, it sounds like the guy in Baylor. Um I would like to see that because I would like them to be NFL ready. I, I, I would like them to have the experience of running the team because the biggest Sherman's biggest problem was he did not manage the team. He managed the offense. He came out on multiple interviews and said, you know what, if if they need me on special teams or defense, they know where to find me. They know where my offense is. If they don't come to me, then I assume everything's all right. Okay, you as a head coach, you need to have your hand in on everything because at the end of the day, when you get when you get canned, yeah, you're gonna can your whole staff, but it was your fault. You know, not that I wanted not that I wanted Shermer messing with the defense, but you know what? I would rather I would rather him take responsibility as a totality of the team than to just be like, well, you know what? I handle this, everyone else handles that. So at the end of the day, I am not going to speculate who the head coach is going to be. I will say this. I have my favorites. Um, you know, if if I had a top of the list, it would be Belichick. Is that realistic? I don't know. And then, like I said, I worry about the Joe Gibb thing. I even go, you know, using a basketball analogy, I worry about the, the Phil Jackson thing. Um, not that Phil Jackson and Bill Belichick are on the same level. Well, actually, if if you're comparing sports, yes, you know what, Bill Belichick probably would be Phil Jackson in the NBA. But you know what, it's going to be a long process. It's going to be a process that we need to watch closely. But it is a process that Gettleman is not going to have total control over. So as fans, we just kind of need to hang tight, watch the interviews, let the organization do what it does. And we'll kind of go from there and hope they make the right pick. Um, This is going to be our last broadcast for the New Year, so Happy New Year's to everyone out there. Also, starting in January, we're going to have a three-part series uh, on on the the organization itself, starting sometime maybe in the middle of January. Uh, It's going to be very interesting. At least I think it's going to be very interesting. And I would really like to thank everyone who has watched, left comments, um, good or bad, these last... um, so we've only been we've only been online now for about five months. Um, it, it's been interesting. It's been fun. We watched it grow, and we hope to continue to grow. And we hope to continue to bring you content that you enjoy listening to. We are going to go back to doing uh, podcasts and videos combined. Got a little lazy this year. 
Uh, but we have the equipment set up. We have everything ready, so I'll, you'll be able to see my wonderful self. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be interesting. I, like I always said to people, you know what? I have the face for radio. Um, but you know what? We're we're going to try to do some new things next year. We're going to push it forward. We're also going to be doing some other content. We are going to be doing uh, Knicks, Rangers, Mets, and Yankees, Nets. Uh, you know, not we will we will stick truly to the Giants. Because um, that's that's our love and our passion, but we've had requests for other content, so we are going to do some playlists for for some different fans to uh, hopefully that everyone will enjoy. And again, this is Tim with Online Big Blue, wishing you a happy new year. 